This episode is brought to you by Magic Spoon. I've never been a pumpkin pie kind of guy. New York has some of the best apples in the country, so I just feel like apples belong in dessert on Thanksgiving. And we've covered my mom's apple pie recipe before, but this year I'm feeling a little bit lazy, kind of over this year. Don't really feel like making a whole apple pie. So if you're lazy this year, or you're maybe not as experienced in pie making, this apple galette that we're gonna make is gonna be right up your alley. A galette is basically a rustic, free-formed, less fancy version of a tart. And a tart is basically a pie without a topping or just some sort of open-faced pastry. It's really easy to do. Even if you've never made a pie before, you can nail this recipe. So let's just jump right into it. First we need to make the dough. And this recipe is basically just like a different form factor from my mom's apple pie. Just a little easier to put together, looks a little different. So I'm gonna go down into my plan of attack. Link to this is down into the bio. And uh, you Patreon members get this for free. So don't forget to go check this out over on Patreon. Mom's apple pie recipe, we're gonna base it off of this with some slight modifications. First we're gonna make the dough. So I got one stick of really cold butter. I'm gonna cut into cubes. I'm gonna go pop this back in the fridge while I prepare the flour. And then two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now there's no sugar in the original dough recipe I made, but I'm going to just add one tablespoon just to help with the color, create a little darker crust. Teaspoon of salt. It's well mixed. Add your butter, kind of break it up into the cubes you cut. And then with your hands, just start to squish the butter flat. You don't need to like break it up, just go with flat squishes of the butter. Use your fingertips. They're the coolest part of your hand. You're just looking for butter that kind of looks like that. Ice water is gonna keep that butter nice and cold. A little more. That's gonna go into the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Overnight's great, a few hours is good. At least 30 minutes. We're just trying to get all that flour hydrated in that fat and that water. It's also gonna relax the dough, make it easier to roll out. Now let's talk about the apples. I just went to my farmer, the guy who sells me apples at the farmer's market. I asked him, what apples do you have that are great in apple pie? He gave me the Granny Smith and Cortland. Really, you can use whatever apples you want. Macintosh, they get a little too soft. He gave me these because the Granny Smith is tart. It holds up a little better to cooking. These are a little sweeter. They get a little softer, so it's a nice contrast. So I'm just gonna peel these up and slice them into thin slices. Let's see it, how thick I actually wanna go. Maybe that's like a, I don't know, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. Now to that, I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of all-purpose flour, like two tablespoons, half a cup of sugar, a little bit of brown sugar for some color, pinch of salt, and then like good amount of cinnamon. Go with how much you want, we like a lot. I'm just gonna mix that together. All the apples should just be nicely coated well with all that good stuff. Just gonna hold this off to the side. Our dough's actually been resting for a while in the fridge so we can roll it out now and get the thing baked. There's our dough, let's roll it out. A little flour just in case. You roll from the middle out and then turn. Going like this is gonna make it really tough. 
Uh, let's get this onto a sheet tray. Now is the time you can sort of get creative in your design. I think I'm just gonna start to go, start in the center and work my way out in a circle. And now just fold that crust over. Don't worry if it tears, you want it to have that rustic look. We're gonna let this chill up back in the refrigerator. Now, while that's chilling in the refrigerator before we bake it, it, gives us a moment to thank our sponsor today, Magic Spoon. Growing up, cereal was a pretty regular part of my diet. But as you grow older, you think for yourself, you eat a little healthier, you take care of yourself better, you kind of cut all those sugars out, at least first thing in the morning. And that was, of course, before I got introduced to Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a new, better cereal. They describe it as the high-protein, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, wheat-free, naturally-flavored, totally delicious, childlike cereal for grown-ups. But it's not just for grown-ups. Kids are gonna love it just as much. It's got zero sugar, it's got 11 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs in each serving. It comes in four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. You can try them all in a variety pack that they'll deliver straight to you. All of these cereals are delicious, but my favorite happens to be the cocoa. It's got that real cocoa taste. You could see the real cocoa powder coating the cereal. As you eat it, it stays crunchy. I mean, you can even hear me crunching on it right now. And even though these use better ingredients, these taste and remind you exactly like your favorite cereals growing up. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee, meaning they will give you your money back if you don't like it, no questions asked. So make sure you go on over to magicspoon.com backslash NACS to grab a variety pack and try it today. And make sure you add the code NACS at checkout to get free shipping. Thank you so much for Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. All right, this guy's been in the refrigerator for about 30, 40 minutes, just chilling back up. I'm gonna dot it with some butter. Some flaky sea salt on top. Some people will put a little sugar on the dough, a little uh, egg wash. I don't, I don't need to. We've got an oven that's been preheating at 400 degrees. We're just gonna pop that in there for about 40 minutes, I'm gonna guess. We're gonna judge it, see if uh, how brown the crust is, if there's bubbling going on, how everything looks, and we're gonna judge based off that. When you see the center start to bubble and the crust start to brown, you should be good to go. It took me closer to an hour to get it there. And then you have it, a rustic, easy to do apple galette. It's like the runt of the apple pie family. I don't know, if you're not too confident with baking, you might wanna give this one a shot. Don't forget this recipe and all my holiday recipes are in my holiday plan of attack. Link down in the description below and all the patrons scrolling up on the screen right now get that for free. So make sure you go over to Patreon, figure out how to access that. This is the last episode before Thanksgiving for me and then we're on to Christmas and then that's the end of season three, I think it is. This is my third year. And it's also the end of this kitchen as I will be carrying on this show in the new year in a different location. Very exciting stuff. All thanks to you guys. So thank you so much. Appreciate you all. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. Yeah.